from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering Radio 2018. Brought to you by VMware. Hello everyone, welcome to the special CUBE coverage here in San Francisco, California for VMware's Radio 2018 event. This is their R&D big event kickoff. It's like, the, like a sales kickoff for engineers, as Steve Harrod said on stage. Our next guest is Morning Van der Waltz, VP of the Explorer Group, Office of the CTO, also program chair for the Event Today conference. Working with a collective of people within VMware on a rigorous selection committee for a high bar here at your event. Welcome to theCUBE, thanks for joining me. Thank you. Um, talk about the event, because I know a lot of work went into it, congratulations, the talks are amazing, I see the schedule. We have Pat Gelsinger coming on later today, we just had Ray O'Farrell on. This is like the, I won't say burning man of VMware, but it's, it, this is like, this is really a recognition, but also really important innovation. Take a minute to talk about the process that you go through to put this together, it's a fantastic event, smartest minds, the cream rises to the top, it's hard, it's challenging, it's a team yeah. effort, but yet, you got to ride the right waves. Right, so radio, R&D innovation offsite, right? And as you said, it is tough because we've got, you know, this huge R&D community, and they've all got amazing ideas, so they get the opportunity to submit ideas. I think this year we had over 1,700 ideas submitted, and at the end of the day, we're only going to showcase 226 of those ideas across research programs, posters, breakout sessions, just in time boffs, birds of a feather. You know, so the bar is high. We've got a finite amount of time, but what's amazing is we take these ideas and we don't just showcase them at radio. We have four other programs that give us the ability to take those ideas to the next level. So when we think about the innovation programs that come out of Octo, this is really to drive what we call off-road map innovation. So Raghu and Rajiv with the uh, Product Cloud Services Division are driving roadmap, you know, zero to three years out, the stuff that you can buy from Customer sales, centric, big customer time. Customer centric. Yeah. Octo is providing an innovation program structure, these five programs, um, Tech Talks, Flings, Borathons, Radio and X Labs, and as a collective, they are focused on off-road map innovation. Maybe something that's going to make give, that, give an example of what that means, off-road. Sure, so last year at Radio, we did a paper that was showcased on functions as a service. So you think of AWS Lambda, Lambda yep. mm -hmm. right? So VMware is uniquely positioned with the substrate to manage and orchestrate VMs, containers, and why not functions? So this radio paper was submitted. I then, as the X Labs group, said, we're going we're gonna to fund this. But given where we are in this market, we said, all right, we'll fund this for 12 months. So we're incubating functions as a service in July, August timeframe, that'll actually exit X Labs into um, the cloud native yeah, business. So, unit. real rapid innovation. Very rapid. Within a 12 month period, we're going to get something into a BU that can then take it to market. Yeah, and also, you all, I would say that there's also, I've seen from the talks here, there's also off road map hard problems that need to kind of get the concepts, building blocks, or architecture. Correct. With the confluence is hitting whatever it's IoT or whatever, yep. blockchain, seeing things like yep. that. Is Correct. that also accurate too? Very, very true. You know, and Ray had a great slide in his keynote this morning. You know, we 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 spoke about how we started in 2003 when he joined the company. It was all about compute virtualization. Fast forward 15 years, and you look at our strategy today. It's any cloud, any device, any app, right? Yeah. Then you got to look to the future beyond that what we're doing today, what are the next 20 years going to look like? Obviously there's things like you know, blockchain, VR, edge computing, you know, um, service ML, meshes. service meshes, adaptive security, and you know, people say, oh, AI, ML, that's a hot topic right now, but if you look back at VMware, we've been doing that since 2006. Mm -hmm. Distributed resource scheduler, a great example of something that you know, at the core of the product was already using ML techniques yeah. you know, to load balance a data center. <laughs> and now you can load balance across clouds. It's interesting how buzzwords can become industry <laughs> verticals. Uh, we right. saw that with Hadoop, it really didn't happen. Um, although it became important in big data, but as it integrates in. I mean, I, I find that you guys really, from the ecosystem that we look at, you guys have a really interesting challenge because you started out as inside the box, if you will, saw that there's a little t-shirt there from the 14 year history. You yep. guys have been doing this event. Uh, uh, great collection of t-shirts behind us, you can't see it, it's, it's really cool. But infrastructure, is so on-premise, you buy, it's data center, growth, all that stuff happened. Cloud comes in, big data comes in, now you got blockchain, 
these are big markets now, but the intersection of all these are all kind of touching each other. Correct. IOT, so it's really a, the, that integration. I also find that you guys do a great job of fostering innovation and always uh, amaze at VMworld with some great either benchmarks or labs and show the good stuff. How do you do it? Walk me through the steps, because you have the, this Explorer program, which is working. Yeah. It's almost a ladder, or a reverse ladder. You know, start with tech talks, get it out uh, to the marketplace. Do a hackathon. hackathon. Take us through the process. So there's four things, tech talks, borathons, which is the meaning behind the name, flings, yep, flings. and X-Labs. Correct. Take us through that progression. And, and radio, of course. And radio, of course, the, all the right. big 10 of so bringing it all together. I'm an engineer, I have a great idea. I want to socialize it, I want to get some feedback. So at VMware, we offer a tech talk platform. You come, you present your idea, it's live, there'll be you know, engineers in the audience. We also record those. And then those get replayed and engineers will say, you know, have you thought about this? Or have you met up with Johnny and Mary? They're actually working on something very similar. Why don't you go and you know, compare ideas? I can actually make that very real. I was in India in November and we were doing a shark tank for our X-Labs incubator. And this one team presented an idea on um, a augmented reality desktop. We went over to another office, actually um, the AirWatch office, and we did another shark tank there. Another team pitched the exact same idea. So I looked at my host and I said, do these two teams know each other? And the guy goes, absolutely not. So what did we do? We made the connection yeah. point. Their ideas were virtually identical. They were 25 kilometers apart, never met. Wow. You know, so when, that's one of the challenges. When your company becomes so big, you've got this vast, you know, R&D organization that's truly global. In one country, 25 kilometers apart, you had two teams with the same idea that never met. So part of the challenge is also bringing these ideas together because, you know, the sum of the parts makes for a greater whole. And they could then collectively come together then present to radio one single paper or Absolutely, idea. or go and say, you know what, let's take this to the next step, which is be a borathon. So borathons are hackathons. Explain the name, because borathon sounds like hackathon, so it is, but there's a meaning behind the name borathon. What is the sure. meaning behind so the name? Sure, so our very first build repository was named after Bora Bora, and so we paid homage to that, okay. and so instead of saying a hackathon, we called it a borathon. And one of our senior engineers apparently came up with that name, yeah. so, and it's stuck, and it's great. Yeah. So it's got history. Okay, so Borathons is like, okay, so you do tech talk, you collaborate, you socialize the idea via verbal or presentation. That gets the seeds of, of innovation kind of planted. Borathon is, okay, let's attack it. Turn it into a prototype. Prototype. And it gets judged. So then you're getting even more feedback from your most senior engineers. In fact, And there's a process for all this that you're, you correct. guys run. Yeah, so the Explorer groups run these five innovation programs. We just recently in um, Palo Alto did a themed Borathon our fellows and PEs came together, decided the theme should be sustainability. And we, we, we mixed it up a little bit. So normally at a Borathon, teams come with ideas that they've already been developing. For this one, the teams had no idea what the theme was going to be, so we, we announced the theme. Then they showed up on the day to learn what the five challenges were going to be. And some of those challenges, one of them was quite interesting. It was um, using distributed ledger to manage microgrids. And that's a... Um, Great blockchain implementation. E well, it's, it's a project that you know, is near and dear to us at VMware. VMware. We're actually going to be setting up a microgrid on campus. And if you think about microgrids, and Nicola Rakat can talk more to this, we're going to be looking at you know, how can we give power back to the city of Palo Alto. Well, imagine that becoming a mesh network. With token economics. How do you start <laughs> tracking this, right? A blockchain would be a perfect way to do this, yeah, yeah. right? So then you take your ideas at a borathon, get them into a prototype, get some more feedback, and now you might have enough critical mass to say, right, you know what, I'm going to present a radio paper next year. So then you work as a team, yeah. get that into the system. And certainly in India, these, these third world countries are now becoming large growing middle class. These are important technologies to build on top of, say, mobile. Absolutely. And with solar and power coming in, it's a yep. natural evolution. So that's good use case. Yeah. Okay, so now I, I do the borathon, now I've got a product. Flings. It's a prototype, right? You so get now. Socialize it, you have a fling, you throw it out there, you fling it out there, what happens? Yeah, so I've done something at a Borathon. It's like, I want to get some actual feedback from the ecosystem, our customers and partners. That example I used with vSAN. Um, you know, vSAN launched, we wanted to get some health analytics. The release managers were doing their job. The product's got to ship on this day. Senior engineers on the team got a health analytics tool out as a fling. 
it got incredible feedback from the community, made it into the next release. Yeah. We did the same with um, the HTML client, right? And that's been in the press lately because you know we got rid of Flex, now there's HTML. But that actually started, two teams started working on that. One team just did HTML, a very small portion of the HTML client, presented a radio paper, two years later another team started the work, and now we have a full-fledged HTML client that's embedded into the vSphere product. So the fling brings in a community dynamic, it brings in new ideas, but, or diversity if you will, all yeah. kinds of diverse ideas melting together. Now Xlabs, I'm assuming that's an incubator that brings it together. What is Xlabs? Is that an incubator? You fund it? What yeah. happens there? So within Xlabs, the, the real way to think about it, it's truly an incubator. I don't want to use the word startup there because you've clearly got the protection of the larger VMware organization. Yeah. So you're not, you're not being a scrappy startup, but we've got an, you've got a great idea. We see there's merit. We see it more Go build a real product on the disruptive side. And so we offer two tracks in the Xlabs. There's a light track, which typically runs three to six months and you're still doing your day job. You, you, you know, you still, so you're basically doing two jobs. You know, we fund you um, with a level of funding that allows you to bring on extra contracting, resources, developers, et cetera, and you're typically delivering you know, one objective. Mm -hmm. The larger um, Xlab is the full track, so functions as a service. Full track, we, we uh, showcased it as a radio paper last year. Mm -hmm. We said, all right, we're going to fund this. We, we're going to give it 12 months worth of funding and then it needs to exit into a business unit. And we got lucky with that one because we're already doing a lot of work with containers, the PKS, um, the Pivotal. Do the people have to quit their day job, not quit their day job, but move their resource over? So Absolutely. So the full track is go for it, green light, yep. run as fast as you can, take it to this business unit. Is the business unit known as the end point in time? To the, is it kind of tracked not there or is it the more time. flexible still? Not all the time. Okay. You know, so sometimes with functions it was easy, right? So we know we've got Paul Fazone heading up cloud native apps, um, the cloud native business unit, he's doing all the partnerships with PKS. That one makes sense. Yeah. We're actually doing one right now, another Xlabs for called network slicing. And it's going to play into the telco space. We've obviously got NFV being, you know, led by Shaykar and team. But we don't know if network slicing, when it exits, and this one is probably going to have a longer time horizon, probably 24 to 36 months, does it go into the NFV business unit or does it become its own business mm -hmm. unit? That's awesome. So, so you got great tracks, end to end, so you have a good process. I got to ask you the question that's on my mind. I think everyone would look at this, and some people might look at VMware as a, as a um, and most people do, at least I do, as a kind of a cutting edge tier one company. You guys are always a great place to work, voted on, as get awards for that. Um, but you, have, you take seriously innovation and organic growth and community and engineering. Engineering and community are two really important things. How do you bring the foster culture? Because remember, engineers can be really pissed off. Oh my God, they're idiots that make the selection. Because you don't want engineers to be pissed. Right. Because right. they're proud yep. and they're inventing. So yep. how do you manage that? Obviously, you, the team approach. What's the cultural secret in the DNA uh, that makes this so successful over 14 years? So before I answer that question, I think it's important to take a step back. So when we think about innovation, we, we call this thing the VMware innovation engine. There's really three parts to it, right? If you think about innovation at its core, sustaining, disruptive, internal, external. And so we've got Product Cloud Services Group, Ragu and Rajiv. We've got Octo, headed up by Ray. We've got Corp Dev, headed up by Shekar. Think of it as it's a three-legged stool you take one of those legs away, the stool falls over, right? So it's, it's a balancing act, right? And we need to be collaborating. And they're talking to each other all the time. We're talking to each other all the time, right? Build or buy. Are we going to do something, you know, internal or we're going to go external, right? You think of some of our acquisitions like NYSERA, right? We didn't build that, we bought it. You think about AirWatch, right? AirWatch put us into the top right quadrant from Gartner, right? Um, so s these are very strategic decisions that get made. Um, Pat just presented at uh, Dell EMC World, um, Dell Technologies World. He had a slide on there that showed, you know, there was the Nizera acquisition, and then it sort of it was this arc leading all the way up to VeloCloud. And when you saw it on one slide, it made perfect sense. As an outsider looking in, you might have thought, why were they doing all these yeah. things? What, why was that acquisition made? But there's always a plan. Yeah. And that plan involves us all talking across. Strategic plan around what to move faster on. Because Correct. always the challenge on M&A, if they're not talking to each other, is the buy build is, you kind of may miss a core competency. They always, what's the core competency of the company? 
and should you outsource a core competency or should you build it internally? Right. Sometimes you might have to accelerate that. So I think AirWatch in this era, yeah. I would say was kind of on the edges of core competency, but together with the synergies. Helped us accelerate. Helped us, and I think that's your message. Yep. So, okay, so that's the culture. How do you make all, what's the secret sauce of making all this work? I mean, because you, know, you have to kind of create an open, collaborative, but it's competitive. Absolutely. So how, does, what's, how do you balance that? You know, so clearly there's a ton of innovation going on within the product cloud services division. The, the stuff that's on the truck that our customers can buy today, right? We also know we've got to look ahead and we've got to start looking at solving problems that aren't on the truck today, right? And so having these five programs and the collective is really what allows us to do that. But at the same time, we need to have open channels of communication back into Corp Dev as well. Um, I can give you examples of, you know, Shaker and his team might be looking at company X. We're doing some exploratory work. IoT, I did an audit for Ray. We said, IoT is going to be massive. Everybody knows that. But you know what's going to be even more massive? Is all the data at the edge. And what do you do with that data? How do you turn that data into something actionable? Right, so if you think about a jet engine mm -hmm. on, a, on a big plane, right? When it's operating correctly, you know what all the good um, levels are, the metrics, mm -hmm. the, the telemetry coming off that. Why do I need to collect that? Throw it away. You want it, you're interested in the anomalies, right? Mm -hmm. As we start thinking about IoT, and we start thinking about all this data at the edge, we're going to need a different type of analytics engine that can do real-time analytics, but not looking at the norm, looking at the deviations, and report back on that so you can take action on that. You know, so we started, we started identifying some companies like PubNub, MuleSoft, who you know, just got acquired, yeah. right? Shaker and his team were looking at the same companies and was like, yeah, these companies are interesting because they're starting to attack the problem in a different way. We do that at VMware all the time. You think about um, yeah. app defense. We've taken a completely different approach to security. You know what the good state is? Well, if you have a deviation, attack that. Yeah. You know, and then you can use things like it's micro-segmentation. It's almost flipping everything upside down. Yeah, challenging the status quo. Yeah. Great stuff, great program. I got to ask you a final question. Um, since it's your show here, great content program, by the way. You got the competition, you got the papers, which is deep technical coolness. But the show is great content, great event. Thanks for uh, inviting us. What's trending? What's, the, what's rising up? What if you had to kind of point at something that you see getting some buzz that you thought might get buzz or didn't get buzz. What's rising of the topics of, of interest here? What's kind of popping out for you? What's trending if I had to do a you know, Twitter feed of like, not Twitter feed, but like top three trending items here? Well, I'll take it back to that last uh, Borathon we did on sustainability. We set out the five challenges. The challenge that got the most attention was the blockchain microgrid. So blockchain is definitely trending. And you know, the challenge we have with blockchain today is it's not ready for the enterprise. So David Tenenhaus and his research group is actually looking at how do you make blockchain enterprise ready? And that is a difficult problem yep. to solve. So there's a ton of interest well, in Well, we blockchain. have an opinion. Don't use the public blockchain. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that, that is, that's one that's definitely trending. We have a great program called Propel where we, we basically attract the brightest of the brightest, you know, um, new college grads coming into the company. And they actually come through Octo yep. first and do a, um, sort of an onboarding process. What are they interested in? They're not really interested in working for a particular BU, but you know, when we share with them, you're going to have the ability to work on blockchain, AI, you know, VR, augmented reality, distributed um, you know, systems, new ways of doing analytics, that's what attracts them. And they have the options to go test and put the toe in the water or jump in deep with X-Labs. Absolutely. So I mean, this is like, a you know, catnip for engineers, right? <laughs> it's yeah. like, draws a lot of people in. Absolutely, and you know, we need to do that to be competitive yeah. in the valley. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a very great hot Great place to work, you guys have a great engineering team. Congratulations for a great event, Morning. thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thank you. We're here in San Francisco for theCUBE coverage of Radio 2018. I'm John Furrier, we'll be back with more coverage after this break, thanks for watching.